In the previous video, we compared Altair 8K Basic running on an Altair 8800 computer to Southwest's 8K Basic running on their 6800 computer. Today, we're gonna to keep those two different machines, but we're gonna run Altair 8K Basic on both of them. This is possible because Altair came out with their own 6800 based computer, the Altair 680, and ported their 8K Basic from 8080 code to run on the 6800. And this was pretty much a translation as opposed to a complete rewrite. So they're very similar as far as they could be um, for the slightly different instruction set. So it'll be a good comparison to see how the two machines compare running essentially the same software. All right, so we're gonna do a video cut and get everything loaded up and then we'll come in and zoom in on the terminals and take a look at uh, a few different things that we can compare. We're gonna run the same chase program and maybe a prime numbers program and see how the two computers compare running basically the same version of BASIC. All right, I've got uh, 8K BASIC booted up on both these machines and I have the chase program loaded. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the monitors. Let's see if I can get both of these in here at once. All right, so as you can see, um, these are both version 3.2 of Altair 8K Basic. This one says MIT 680 Basic. Uh, that's the 6800 version. And this is the standard one for the 8080 processor. Now you see the 8080 processor out of our 16K has 10,500 bytes free and the uh, 6800 version has about 330 bytes fewer. So it uh, took about 330 bytes more of code to implement 8K BASIC in the 6800 than it did in the 8080. Now when the uh, 6800 first came out, uh, people were predicting it would take twice as much code to do the same thing because it was quite a different architecture than the 8080. They also predicted it would be much slower. And uh, that we can find out here in just a minute. But space-wise, you see 300 bytes out of 8K, we're talking, uh, you know, we're talking well under 5% difference. So that's relatively insignificant. All right, so we've got the program here in both of these. If I can type here. All right, there we go. I'm having to dodge this tripod every time. Oh wait, control, <laughs> backspace doesn't work. No wonder I'm so stuck at shift O. I'm gonna have to figure out how to get around this tripod. Okay, so we have the program in both of them. I've changed the program just a bit to allow seeding the random number generator so that we know we're getting the exact same run, that there's no way it's any different. All right, so we're gonna seed the random number generator. Um, let's just pick 56 on both of them and let's let it run. One, two, three, go. All right, and you see they both came out pretty much the exact same time. Um, again, it had to calculate this game board. If you remember from the last video, that's a lot of calculations with random numbers. And then after it does that, it has to do more calculations to render this screen where you can see all the X's, which are walls and barriers, and then all the little plus signs, which are enemies, and then you are the asterisk in the middle. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and make a move. Although it didn't render the exact same boards. But anyway, you can see this is all about the same speed for the two. It looks like that finishes drawing just a bit slower. Maybe because that has two stop bits set and this one has one. That might be the difference. But uh, anyway, so right off the bat, the two seem to be pretty much the exact same speed, unlike the Southwest versus the Altair Basics, in which we saw the big difference because of the extra precision that the Southwest carried in all its calculations. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, take a video cut and I'm going to load a primes number program and let's compare how um, the 6800 does against the 8080 for that. So again, what we're seeing here is basically the same version of basic. What we're seeing is the difference between the two processors, the 8080 versus the 6800. All right, so I have a simple um, prime number program entered in here. It's from an old magazine called Interface Age, not necessarily the most efficient way to generate prime numbers, but then it also is the same for both computers, so it's a fair comparison. Okay, and I'll hit return. It's gonna generate prime numbers between one and 100. Over on the left, we're just a little bit ahead, it looks like. It'll spit out the word done here, and it just stopped. We'll see how that looks.
Okay, so 6800 is done, and now the 8080 is done. So obviously the 6800 did that a little bit quicker, but whatever the difference is between this benchmark program type calculations versus calculating that game board, um, it, it made a difference between the two show up a bit more. Uh, does this prove the 6800 is faster than the 8080 processor? Uh, no, but it proves they're pretty much basically the same processor, which would make sense because of the technology of the day, and they were both, you know, very high-tech um, companies, Motorola and Intel, both knew what they were doing. Uh, it could be that the floating point routines, when they converted from 8080 to 6800, they smartened them up just a hair because they had learned some things. Um, who knows for sure? But anyway, um, I would say no, one's not better than the other but they truly are on par with each other. You could make a great computer out of either one of them. And the fundamental point that we've seen over and over is Southwest did this for a lot less money for something that's pretty much on parity. So it's kind of hard to argue with that um, unless you just want all the switches and the lights, which of course is sure a lot of fun today. But back then it was actually quicker and easier to go without it. All right, so that does it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at the first um, disk drives that were available for Southwest, and that actually came from a third party rather than Southwest themselves. Um, but then Southwest followed up on their own before too long. Um, but that will be in the next video. So this video isn't quite over after all. There was one more point I wanted to make. As we mentioned, MITS made their own computer with the 6800 processor called the Altair 60, uh, excuse me, the Altair 680. It was meant to be the little brother, the lower cost, lower performance version of their flagship, the 8800. But as we saw here today, the 6800 is completely on parity with the 8080 processor. So that was a bit of a problem for their marketing model. So what uh, MITS ended up doing was running the 6800 at half of its normal clock speed. The normal clock on a 6800 is one megahertz. They ran it at 500 kilohertz. Uh, the rumor was because they needed to make sure it didn't work as well as the 8800. Watching this demonstration today, you can kind of see where that rumor might have been true. So just an interesting piece of uh, history there that uh, we can only guess to know for sure, but it certainly sounds plausible.